yesterday I mentioned how disingenuous these uh, solar generator companies are for not doing anything to dispel the myth that these uh, solar generators, these little boxes, can run your whole freaking house. And uh, they don't actually come out and say that. <clears throat> but when other people are led to believe that, they repeat it. And the companies that sell these, they do no nothing at all to dispel that myth. And here's an example. This morning, a prepper forum that I go to on Facebook, a lady, I forget her name, doesn't really matter because they all do it. Uh, put a picture of this solar generator. It's a box about this big. And she said, just got my XYZ. They're all the same. XYZ solar generator. Bring it on, Winter. And then she left a link to it, right? And right in the frickin' link says affiliate link. So, in the comments, I put... This is a dirty way to make commission. This is clearly an affiliate link. And she says, well, how do you know it's an affiliate link? I said, because it says affiliate link in this long address you just left. And she didn't answer me after that. And uh, other people are asking her questions about this, which is what she wanted. She wanted to generate discussion about this thing that she's an affiliate sales for. She makes commission if people go through that link and buy one. She gets a, a hefty commission. So she's telling people, this will run my whole house. That's how it starts. And these people who don't, I gotta, sh one second, I gotta shut some heat off over here. Ooh. Warmed up quick in here, man. Now I got my little electric heater going on behind me. Let me, let me turn that down, because it's already. It's already 65, only took a few minutes to warm it up in here between the propane heater and the electric heater. Uh, yeah, my little little buddy propane heater right there. That thing works good and fast. And no, I'm not an affiliate. <laughs> Although I, I do have an Amazon link, but I won't put an Amazon link to that. So uh, the questions people are asking, will it run my refrigerator? How long? And she's telling these god-awful lies in the, in the uh, comment section. It'll run your whole house for two or three days. And it only takes a couple hours to recharge this. If uh, that battery was big enough to run her whole house, it would take more than two or three hours to recharge it. Anyway, the size of the batteries, the amount, the number of batteries the weight of the batteries would be, you know, massive to run your whole house. And uh, I got a real problem with these solar generator people. They're, they're, they're liars. And I mentioned yesterday that part of lying is omitting the truth or not doing anything to dispel misconceptions that are absolutely wrong. And... Uh, that's what they're doing. And people will spend thousands of dollars on these things expecting to be able to run their whole house on it. You can't even run your water heater on these things. They're not, but now some of them are, but you're talking seven, eight, nine thousand dollars for the ones that are big enough to actually run your whole house. My heat strip, for example, I have a small house and I have only have a one and a half ton AC, and I have a 15 kilowatt heat strip, which is way bigger than that little house needs. I could get away with a 10 kilowatt heat strip just fine. But uh, whose house doesn't have either a heat pump or a heat strip or, you know, gas? I mean, if you have gas, then you don't need a whole house generator. You just need something to run your blower. And uh, people are going to be sadly, and maybe even at some point, dangerously come to a sad realization or a dangerous realization that these things are not going to do what they say they're going to do. I mean, you have people that have refrigerators for insulin. You have people that, like myself, that sleep with a CPAP. I can't sleep without it, which is one of the reasons that drove me to make sure that I absolutely have access, you know, to CPAP. I have a little tiny generator that 
would last a, a year on the gas I got just running my CPAP. Uh, I have a huge generator that runs my whole house and I uh, run it on propane and gas. And then there's people that have uh, oxygen, you know? I mean, and, and they're gonna be, these solar generator companies are gonna be responsible for the deaths of people who have believed the bullshit that they'll run your whole house. And uh, when it comes time, they actually get them up. Just like me yesterday, I was feeling pretty smug, okay, about being how well prepared I am for any emergency. And then I went out there to crank my generator up and it wouldn't crank. And, uh, you know, I found out why and I got it fixed immediately. It was a twofold problem. One was I left the valve on on my propane tank and all the gas slowly leaked out over the course of two and a half months. And the uh, second thing was I had the uh, regulator up way too high. And uh, it, what it did is close the, there's a valve on the generator itself that when the pressure's too high, it closes the valve to avoid, a, you know, an explosion or a fire. And I figured that out. I turned the thing barely on and it cranked right up. So and that's what I'm talking about when these people actually, a lot of, you know, a lot of people don't get these things out. I give them a dry run, try them out, see if it'll actually run your house. They feel good, they buy it, they stick it away, and when, in, when there's an emergency, I'll get it out and see how it works and read the instructions in the dark. So, that's all I wanted to say. And this lady, this affiliate who is selling these solar generators, junk generators, is a perfect example of the people that perpetuate these lies and then when people actually ask them pointed questions, will this run my whole house? Yeah, absolutely run your whole house. This little tiny box, you could run your entire house on it. And uh, there's gonna be some legal repercussions over this, I guarantee it, when uh, we have a huge power outage and somebody thinks this is gonna keep their insulin cold or their oxygen generating. And, uh, and it doesn't. And I guarantee you their defense will be, well, we never said that. Well, no, but people in your own comment section said that, and you answered them. And the people who represent you, the affiliates, said that. <laughs> I don't know why it makes me so mad. And, and then, when you go to a, a prepper forum, and you leave a link to a product and clearly you're benefiting from that product. It's like me going and leaving an Amazon link on somebody else's platform. I don't, I wouldn't dream of it. It's uh, wrong. But the people that sell these solar generators, they think nothing of it. And even when it says affiliate link right in the link they're leaving, they'll deny it's a, an affiliate link. It's funny. Oh, so close. I'm just starting on this. This is a dinner skinner that I am going to uh, mirror polish. I think I got it. And these lower grits are the most important grits when you're planning on mirror polishing. Okay, can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a bone to pick. Uh, these uh, solar generators are actually a good idea. Let's say you're camping in, in an area that doesn't allow generators and doesn't have electrical hookups. Well, it's a handy way to have lights on your camper. Uh, you know, I mean, that there is a legitimate purpose for these things. If you live in an apartment, you know, they're not going to let you plug a generator into your house. They're not going to let you run a generator. If you rent a house, the person who, the landlord, he's not going to let, he may, you may get away with a generator, but you're not going to get away with running, you know, connecting the electrical box to your generator like what I did. So these have a legitimate use, but they're not happy enough selling these to people 
knowing they're not happy enough with the business they would get selling them to people who would have a legitimate need for them and a legitimate use for them. They want all the extra business of people who buy these thinking that they're home free when the lights go out. They'd power their whole house on them and play their video games and run their shop. <laughs> And then there's the solar panels. They give you just enough solar panels to charge this in 12 hours off full sun. Right now, we've had cloudy days. We had a little sun yesterday, but we've had like five days of mostly cloudy days. You could not recharge one of them systems with a little bit of sun we've had. So uh, how are you going to charge it? Well, you know what the off-grid people do? They have a gas generator and they charge their batteries, their solar batteries from a gas generator. So, but they don't, you know, those people are serious off-gridders and they're, they don't have a dog and hunt. They just need electricity and they don't care. They use the best, least costly, most convenient. And I'm sure noise is also part of it. Nobody wants to hear a generator run unless you have to. My generator is very quiet. Uh, I don't know if you, yesterday's video, I stood in the house. The house was dead silent, no TV, no nothing, except my wife talking a little bit in the background. Uh, and you could just barely hear my generator in the house. And that's the reason I built that quiet shed for it. All right, I think I can have this side done with one more piece of sandpaper. That's all I got. If I think of anything else to uh, any other brilliance I can dazzle you with, I'll turn this back on. Man. All right, I'm on side B. And, uh... Still, still sanding. It's getting there though. I uh, was thinking about, you know, rabbits, raising rabbits for meat. And then I got to thinking about how my wife and I, I know us, we would have rabbits in the house and then they'd be rap, lap rabbits and we would have names for all of them and uh, we would be able to kill them and eat them. And then I was thinking about fishing, you know. I don't know what happened to me, but I quit fishing because the thought of the hook, you know, I didn't know if they felt pain or not. And what little pleasure I got from railing them in and then pulling the hook out and throwing them back. Was it enough to justify the pain that they may be feeling? Isn't that weird? So I don't fish anymore just because... I don't know if it hurts them or not, or I don't want to frighten them coming out of the water and looking at this, and uh, getting, then getting thrown back, what stories they had to tell. A monster! <laughs> so, and chickens. I had chickens once, and uh, if y'all remember, I love my chickens. And I love the eggs. But I couldn't have killed them and ate them. No, couldn't have done it. So, you know, if the end of the world comes, I'm going to have to figure out a way to move on beans the rest of my life. And uh, I thought about this the other day. I was sitting at the table. And uh, I was eating uh, vegetables, you know, the frozen vegetables that you can throw in a microwave in the bag and uh, like six minutes, it cooks them in six minutes. I was sitting there eating those vegetables and I uh, got to thinking about being thankful. <clears throat> and uh, we don't have a lot of money, but uh, we have so much to be thankful for. We have both been through surgeries and traumatic surgeries and life-changing surgeries 
and we're still here kicking and we're still able to enjoy life and uh we got a lot to be thankful for and then i got to thinking about those vegetables and many years ago i used to haul out of uh del monte in swedesboro new jersey which is exit seven by the way <laughs> and uh i was thinking all the people and all the hands and all the the god that went into vegetables first you got the plants then you have the soil then you have the people that plant those plants and then you have rain that waters them then you have people a machinery that was built by other people harvesting i mean there's so many hands involved in a can of peas and uh when I give thanks for my food, I should really give thanks to the Creator, of course. But all the other hands that were involved, right up to the truck driver who delivered them to the store, and the uh, stalker who took them out of the box and put them on the shelf, and the cashier, okay, there's no more cashiers, but back in the day when they had cashiers, and... Uh, I mean, think of, think of the hundreds of different hands and people, thousands, that went into getting a can of vegetables, I don't know why my eyes are watering, to your house. And then your car. The people that built your car. The gas that goes into it. The insurance that covers it. The registration that allows it to be on the road. All the different people that are involved in a can of peas. Not to mention in a shit hits the fan situation, you could knock somebody out with them, but I'm not talking about that right now. Remember that movie, somebody beat somebody to death with a can of peas, or maybe it was peaches, I don't know. But uh, that was one of them uh, end times movies, end of the world movies. And it was kind of funny, because he thought he was beyond being able to kill anybody over food, but he did over a can of peas. Maybe it was green beans or something, but you know what I mean. So, uh, yeah, the thankfulness. Have you ever stopped and thought about all the people that are involved, in, including our creator, that are involved in Something as simple as a can of peas, you know, the label. Uh, the people that print the label. The people that make the machinery that prints the label. The people that make the ink that prints the label that goes in the machine. Uh, right out of the Army, one of my first jobs was driving a forklift at a advertising company of the inserts that go in newspapers. And... Uh, I picked them up at the printing press and then I brought them over to uh, this thing. I squeezed them down and then you run straps over them and then you wrap them in shrink wrap. It's hard to keep up sometimes. And uh, just my little old job, driving a forklift that, you know, it was, wasn't minimum wage, but, you know, it wasn't much over minimum wage. And uh, that job, if I didn't do that job, guess what? The stuff that came off the printing press wouldn't get shipped. I mean, it's just amazing how connected everybody is. And, uh, you know, I think about everybody's job from the guy that mops the floor in the bathroom to, to the highest paid CEO. You know, everybody has their contribution. Now, we may all not agree on how just the compensation is for those contributions. I know I don't. Uh, I just I just left a comment on a newspaper article. You know I'm not a union guy. I don't like unions myself. Uh, but yellow, the yellow YRC, yellow and roadway went together, and they called them YRC, the Yellow Roadway Corporation. Well, you know they went out of business. Well. The union knew its days were numbered with yellow, so they did make concessions, major concessions to, to the, you know, the owners of the, the stockholders, basically. 
And their complaint was, and justly so, I think, was that the management, some of the managements were making multiple million dollar salaries and they weren't sharing the wealth. None of the wealth was coming down to the people actually performing the labor, doing the jobs, riding the forklifts, lifting the heavy stuff and putting them in trailers and driving the trucks back and forth. And uh, they weren't making any more money. And the people who were getting the multi-million dollar salaries were getting more and more and more. And their benefits package grew and grew and grew. And their stock ownership. Anyway, for once, I found myself on the side of the union. The union made concessions, really reasonable concessions, in order to keep the company in business and keep their job and keep their pensions. So... I don't know what started me thinking about that, but uh, it's kind of funny me being such a non-union guy all these years and getting a lot of crap from the unions because I was non-union. And uh, I used to actually haul yellow freight from Buffalo, New York. Me and Charlie, we would uh, bring, uh, how did we end up doing that? Okay, Tonawanda, North Tonawanda. I used to pick up... Uh, mufflers, and then my return trip from GM here in Shreveport, I would bring empty muffler racks, the thing, the racks that they hung the mufflers on, back up there, and sometimes there wasn't a load to come back with, so we would go to Yellow, and they would load Yellow Freight on our trailer and bring it down south, and uh, let me tell you how, <laughs> so we hauled Yellow Freight, and we got called some names, man, well, uh, this is how dirty they are. One time we had a death in the family. And we hauled some yellow freight to yellow. We had an emergency. We had to leave our trailer. And uh, I asked the people, the management, if we could leave our trailer there for a few days. We had a death in the family. And they said, sure, no problem. Well, that was okay with management. But when the union drivers came in and seen uh, our non-union trailer in their drop yard, they packed trailers around it so we couldn't get to it. And then they put pin locks on the trailer so we couldn't move it and get our trailer. Douchebags. All my life I hated unions. And my only experience with unions were those related to trucking or General Motors, the auto workers unions. So that's all, you know, I'm sure there's pipe fitters unions and uh, welding unions. I, you know, I don't, I can't speak on them because I never had any experience with them. I've had experience with longshoremen, warehouse workers unions, uh, uh, trucking unions, and that's it. And I learned to despise unions and union workers. But this one time, I found myself agreeing and, and siding with unions. So yellow is out of business, roadway, gone. Look at this real close. And you gotta look at it in all different kinds of light. Okay. Now, now we're moving up a grit. I'm at 180. I'm fixing to move up to give me one second. I gotta do one thing here. This is going to be a mirror polish knife, so I've got to go put all the effort in these lower grits. Uh, you know, the buffer can overcome some scratches that I leave with the higher grits, but it can overcome the scratches that are left that I don't get out with the lower grits, like the 180 and the 220.
don't know why I'm bothering making knives. I'm not selling any. It is kind of nice. I'm not in a hurry making them. I'm just making them to have something to do. We are, man, I keep missing that trash can. We are, Bev's going to take us all out to eat today for lunch. So, uh, it's almost time. And, uh, I've made a, this is a big accomplishment. The major, the first grit, actually, this is the second grit. The first grit was 150. And, uh, the first couple of grits, the first three grits, actually, when I get to 220 after that, like 320, that goes on. Sometimes I can get through the whole knife just using one piece of sandpaper, which is nice. So it takes about three times the amount of sandpaper on the three lower grits that I use. Well, anyway, Bev's taking us out to lunch today, so uh, I'm going to go clean up a little bit. And uh, I'm going to, I got a box that I'm going to stick some lighters in and send them to a guy that collects them, collects Zippos. So, that's probably it for me today. I'm sorry I... Well, I'm not sorry. I just like talking. So, uh, you probably didn't watch all this. If you did, the magic word is... Mini Schnauzer. Remember that. <laughs> See ya. So, do you think a tractor supply... I mean, not tractor supply, but... Harbor, Harbor Freight, Freight has a cheap pair of channel locks. Don't, yeah, don't you think I need a pair of channel locks? Channel locks would work good. I had a pair... Bev, how old are you, Bev? You're 70. How old are you, hon? I'm going to be 70. So you're not quite 70, Bev. You are 70. I'm the youngest one here. I think we can all agree that those buzzards are not here for me. <laughs> <laughs> I counted them. 22. 22 look, buzzards. there's more over there, certainly. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. I bet they live over there right there in that little piece of woods. Well, what is troublesome is why they're here. Well, yeah. maybe they're not finding enough roadkill to survive. Well, the thing of it is, so they, they only show up when they smell something dead. Oh, well, maybe they are here for me. <laughs> what are you eating? I'm thinking they're just short of their usual diet and they found a dumpster they can get in and I like the way they hop. Yeah, they have yeah. to. Man, I'm too they good to fly. Go a long way to get airborne. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Harbor Freight. Okay. Alrighty. Right. I'm gonna go heat, 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 treat this. Get it in the tempering oven. Tomorrow, I will clean it up, buff it out, and get the handles on it. This is gonna be mirror polished. So. Have a good Friday morning, y'all. To quote the assembly that was built up through the supply chain. This is the FAA granted most Boeing 737 MAX 9 aircraft as officials investigate the cause of the detached door plug. An incident passengers on that flight won't soon forget. It was just so scary when it happened because you just hear that loud noise um, and then the plane filled with wind and the mask dropped and it was just something you don't want to be experiencing on flight. Fear that Boeing CEO is also acknowledging. I got kids, I got grandkids.